There are so many things to talk about grand final day. Would you do anything differently? Uh, no, no, uh, yeah, there was a lot of preparation. Obviously, we had uh, a few years of uh, mental torment, torment uh, in regard to uh, not quite getting there. So, uh, whatever it took on the day, uh, you know, uh, uh, the team was pretty resilient and uh, waterproof. So, uh, down at half time, we uh, still believe in what we're doing, and you know, to everyone's credit, all the uh, supporters. Everyone stuck with us and uh, kept believing in us, and it was a great result. You gave that tie fair workout. Was that um, was that premeditated or not? No, uh, honestly, you can see it was just a raw emotion. It was um, there's no planning involved. You know, I uh, we were down at half time with no cordless chokers as we were walking down the thing. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know, I, I kind of remember things people say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, to me, it was basically, you know, go get nicked. Uh, we're not churches, we're poor. Yeah. Travis, you get to be the premiership captain. Sad story about Matthew Primus, Josh Franco missed out as well. What I want to ask you about is 01, 2 and 3, our finals campaigns went off the rails. We were arguably the best side three years in a row. So how much belief was there? We're playing a team in Brisbane who are looking at their fourth premiership in a row. They were an unbelievable side. Yeah, they were. And I guess early on in that season, unfortunately, and that is his night, he was the captain. Uh, and he was the one from day one. Yeah, it's been documented. Let's, uh, let's actually get many points up here. Yeah. Especially in our AFL journey, where we've come from. 
Ryan, it's really significant. I can give Gavin a, a bit of a bait to get him going. Uh, once every now and again, because of our relationship, we, as a 17 year old, he was playing when I was finishing my career. We've known each other for a long time. He knows I love him, and he knows that I respect him and expect a certain standard from him, and I'm not going to put up with him finishing his career at Port Adelaide and not getting what he deserves. So I'm going to put it on him. I'm going to make sure that he delivers what he can. And he brought it to the table, kicked the last two goals for us, got us over the line, get us to the grand final, and uh, we'll remember it forever. On my 60th birthday, on my ball, I've got a Gavin Wanganee dog painting that I absolutely love. So thank you, Gavin. Thank you. The trophy, the premiership trophy, people can actually go to the club and pick it up and take it home. It's like an idea. You have to sign it out. It's a very risky thing to do, I can tell you, for a lot of people. But, but, but what a thing to do to actually let the fans grab that trophy and take it home and have photos with it. It was, it was extraordinary. Yes, yeah, look, it came about as probably, I mean, we, we won the grand final on Saturday. We celebrated the Sunday Sunday night. The, the cup was still on the ground, and I thought well, we must do something with it. Took it home, cleaned it up, brought it back next day. We had a board meeting with our board. It was sitting just over here, most of them, on a Monday night. God knows why we had a board meeting Monday night. So Greg Walton well, started the board meeting and said, we have no business tonight. Let's go over to the licensed club and we'll have a bike to So we're going to celebrate and we we'll take Come over with us. We sit on the table, and there's probably 50, 60 people around, and, and each of them come over and they touch it, and they have photos done with it, and then we left it there. We left it there every day for months and months. People would come in, so thousands of people came in, thousands had the chance to touch it. Because it was their trophy, I mean, at the end of the day, as a free club, we come from humble suburban Port Adelaide, and we're in the big league, and we need. One thing to give us the respect that we deserve, we've got the respect of the SFL over that whole journey. One thing we needed in the AFL was that we were still aware of the AFL Premiership. It belonged to everyone, and we made sure that everyone felt the And one of the issues we had, we got this out of the very good. Um, after a few days, we actually did some panel repairs, didn't we, on that car? It's taken a few dings over the journey. A few, I think it's taken a few more since. <laughs> Gavin, they say you should never celebrate until the siren goes, but there must have been a point. There must have been a point in that game where you said we've, we've won the premiership. Yeah, I think I sit up there when I kick my fourth goal. That's it, but I'm probably, you know, there's about 10 minutes to go, and, but the tears just started to fall because of all the hard work and in the. The three previous seasons we were favourites and we probably should have won a premiership, but we didn't. And, you know, as a group, we're quite fortunate that we ended up getting up off the ground after those knockout punches, getting up with that courage to go and win the premiership. We could have easily just fallen over and everyone would have forgotten who the hell we were and we never could have been awarded the premiership. So that's how special that over yeah. premiership is. Chuck, so, um, we've talked about the great players, the real, real good players. In the premiership final, Roger James, probably one of the most outstanding individual games. Actually, some of us are arguing for the great final. Yeah, I've spoken to uh, Grant Thomas and a few uh, St Kilda people, and they can't believe who in the hell is this Roger James that basically kept Port Adelaide in the game for the first 20 minutes of the first quarter. Did no one else touch the ball? And uh, Fraser Garrett obviously has a shot on goal. Everyone, every one of you got on the ground and thank you very much. Uh, so, you know, can't have the players down, settle it down, and uh, thanks to Roger. Also, uh, it would be uh, remiss of me on this night not to remember the other coaches uh, that I had with me. Um, you know, we had uh, certainly uh, Phil Walsh, who was a great mate of mine. Uh, we had Dean Bailey, uh, again, wonderful coach. Uh, put a lot of calmness. Uh, there's a, uh, a little clip of me going a bit crazy in the box early days with uh, David Hutton mucking up the uh, communication. <laughs> David Hutton, I've known in front of everyone. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, Dean was a wonderful uh, balancing act in our, uh, in our box. And David uh, Pittman, 
who comes from the dark side, if you like, and uh, they've been um, fantastic for us in the, the ruck uh, area. And uh, Jeff Morris again, been with Stephen. Jeff, mate, when I was 17 in West Adelaide, Jeff played and it was an all Australian uh, at West Adelaide. So we had some real quality coaches in the box, and people all forget that. Uh, Alison Clarkson was our forwards coach until two weeks before the grand final, so I uh, understand that as well. We had a terrific, very talented box. Lots of them have obviously gone on to be AFL coaches. Ed Benny, then uh, Dimmer, then Dewey now. You know, we, we had a wonderful uh, uh, era where we developed a lot of players that became great coaches, and uh, we're very proud of our players who have gone on to become something great as well. Brian, um, when we enter the AFL, and you might, you might have uh, something to say about this as well, but um, everyone thinks that Brian Cunningham is the cleanest living person of all time. Never broke a rule in his life. I mean, to dispel that myth because you are you, the cheating that went on behind closed doors to get us into the AFL. The players that we hit from the draft and the different things you did. Do you want to talk a little bit about <laughs> creative? Creative. It's not cheating. There's no, there's no cheating about it because we were an SNFL club winning premierships, not yet in the AFL. So in 1996, when we're not yet in the AFL, why can't we go and contract Warren Treadray and contract uh, five other of our best players and then go and get Matty Primus out of Brisbane? We can do all of that stuff because we are not in the AFL. Frank and Mike? Yeah, we are fine. Josh Franco? Oh, no, we are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Michael yeah. Wilson, Michael Peter Burley, yeah. 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 Tom Carr, yeah. Paul Evans. Who did we get? And at the end of the day, we got everyone we wanted, which was great. But we, it, it's about being the best people on and off the field. We had, as Mark described, we had the best coaching panel in the AFL. We won more games in that period of time between 2001 and 2004 than any other club, including at Brisbane. They won three premierships. But getting the right people, the right players, and the right off-field people, the right snowballs of the world, um, that is really important. So, you know, we, um, we did everything that we could, and within the rules, I find 50 grand. <laughs> Happy to take it here. Well, we want to thank you know, for it was a very special four year period. Please thank Brian Cunningham, Mark Williams, Brian Trevor, and the